Hey beautiful, today on Beauty Beyond Betrayal, we are tackling a very heavy but essential topic. The difference between confession and true repentance after betrayal in marriage. But before we dive into that, I have to share with you a new five-star review that just came in, and it's from T in the Charleston area. She says, the Beauty Beyond Betrayal podcast is inspiring. Thank you for giving hope and inspiring us to forgive both ourselves and others and have grace. It's my opinion that you can only share such vulnerable things because you have experienced experienced ultimate peace, healing, and forgiveness, and therefore there is hope in the ability for others to do the same. Through sharing, you liberate our feelings of being stuck. You have conquered the darkness, and in turn, so can we. There doesn't have to be a bitterness. There can be new life. Thank you for the reminder that Jesus can restore it all when we choose to forgive, heal, and move forward and for lighting the path in that journey. Thank you so much, T, for sending such an inspiring, invigorating, and beautiful five-star review to the Beauty Beyond Patrol podcast. You can also do the same below in the show notes. You can do a speak pipe and you can leave it there, or you can head on over to your favorite platform and leave us a five-star review, especially on Apple Podcast. This keeps us as a top one five percent, 1.5 percent actually, global rated podcast all across the globe. And it gets us in front of those who desperately need to find hope and healing from the devastating effects of betrayal. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart once again for that five-star review. And I can't wait to feature yours on an upcoming episode of Beauty Beyond Betrayal. Now, stay tuned because we have a great show in store for you today. Hey beautiful, welcome to Beauty Beyond Betrayal. Have you discovered your husband's been having an affair? Do you just want the pain to stop and be able to take a deep breath again? Do you find yourself up late at night googling how to save your marriage, heal from an affair? Do you wake up with the hope that this nightmare would end only to feel crushed and humiliated because your husband acts like the affair was really your fault and now you're left obsessing with where he is and if he's seeing her again? Hey, I'm Lisa. I too was devastated when I discovered my husband was having an affair. I too felt the pain would never end and wished he would just stop the affair and we could restore our marriage. I wanted the weight of the trauma to be lifted so I could breathe again and be able to have someone, anyone help me climb out of the dark miry pit of despair so I could begin to heal and be confident in me again. But I kept telling myself, he won't stop seeing her, must have been my fault and this pain, it'll never go away until I found hope and healing in Christ, along with simple techniques that helped me to learn how to recover from the betrayal. In this podcast, you'll discover what betrayal trauma really is, learn simple techniques to heal and recover, and get biblical guidance to help you make the right choices as you heal from the affair so you can be free from the heartbreak and the pain and rise in confidence once again to be the woman God created you to be. So beautiful, grab your favorite latte or a glass of wine, snuggle up on the couch and focus on yourself for a few minutes. Let's dive into what it really means to rise up from the ashes of betrayal and loss into a life that you really desire. Welcome back to the show, beautiful. Yes, we are diving in deep today to a very heavy but essential topic. We're going to be talking about the difference between confession and a true repentance after betrayal and marriage. Now, whether you've experienced this firsthand or you're here out of curiosity on someone else's behalf, because you might be, well, I'm going to be breaking all of this down in a way that's informative. It's going to be very insightful and maybe even a little humorous because we all need a little bit of humor when we're dealing with such a heavy topic as betrayal. Because, you know, we need to laugh sometimes so that we can stop crying, right? Of course we do. So let me set the stage for you here. Betrayal in marriage, whether it's infidelity, an emotional affair, a sexual affair, maybe it is through uh, pornography addiction, 
For some, it could be just the deceit of it all, right? Uh, It's devastating to say the least. It's like getting hit by a Mack truck. But instead of physical injuries, well, you're actually left with emotional and psychological scars. When the dust finally does settle and the truth finally comes out, there's usually a moment when the betrayer confesses, right? He comes to the table. Maybe you found out on what we have deemed to call it D-Day, Discovery Day. Maybe you pulled up some information on the internet, on your computer. Maybe you came across information on his phone. Maybe it was through email. Maybe you caught him red-handed, right? However it is, at that moment in time, reality is hit and the betrayer usually confesses. But Confession, what I want you to know, beautiful, is just the tip of the iceberg. Let me say that again. Confession is just the tip of the iceberg. Now imagine your spouse as an iceberg. And betrayal is the part that hit the Titanic. Confession is what you see above the water. While true repentance is what's lurking beneath. And just like with an iceberg, ignoring what's below can actually sink the whole ship. Now think about that analogy for a moment, right? Let that sink in. Confession is essentially saying, I did it, right? That's the tip of the iceberg. Yes, I did this. And maybe for you, it could have come to you through drip disclosure, It could have been in little increments. Yes, I kissed her. Yes, we had an emotional affair. Yes, it was just the last two months. Or maybe now the story is, yes, we have been sleeping together for the last two years. This is drip disclosure. And this, again, is confession. It's the acknowledgement of the betrayal. Now, did you hear the word, what I just used? Acknowledgement. This is where they are acknowledging to you they have betrayed you. It's that cringeworthy moment when your spouse finally admits to the pornography use, the sexual addiction, the affair, or, you know, just the, the fact that they have been living this secret, deceptive life for God knows how long. Whatever the form of betrayal is, it is betrayal nonetheless. It's important. Don't get me wrong here. And if we just stop right here, where we're just stopping with the confession, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a broken bone. You can't just Band-Aid the betrayal away with confession. Now let's talk about true repentance on the flip side. True repentance is where the real healing begins. This isn't just saying, yes, I did it. Yes, I've been watching porn. Yes, I've got a sexual addiction. Yes, I've had an emotional or a sexual affair. It's saying, yes, I did this to you. I sinned against you. I've sinned against God. I am so sorry And here's what I'm going to do about it. Here's what I'm going to do to make it right. It's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. It had nothing to do with you. It is my, it was my free will choice. I'm the one who did this. You see, beautiful, true repentance involves acknowledging the fact that they have committed betrayal, that they have committed infidelity, that they've been living a sinful, deceitful life. They are acknowledging that to you. They are also taking full responsibility of their actions. They are telling you they are the one who did this. It's not your fault. They are not blame shifting you. They are not manipulating you, gaslighting you in in any of it. No, no, no. They are actually saying this is what I've done. Then repentance also involves change. That they are 
like turning away. In the Hebrew, we call that teshuva. It means a complete 180 change. They are turning away from the sinful behavior. They're running from it with everything that they are. And they are running to repent. True remorse. They are seeking out God and they are seeking to be reconciled with him and with you. They are changing trajectory, changing the path that they were on. They are also taking action. They are moving into action steps that are saying, this is what I'm going to do about it. I'm getting into a recovery group. I'm starting, I'm, I've made my first appointment with a CSAT. I I'm wanting to support you in your journey because I know I've traumatized you and I want to see you healed as well. How can I support you in your journey of healing? And they make a commitment to you, to God, to you, and to themselves to dive in deep to the recovery work and do whatever it takes to finally get to restoration. That's true repentance. It's not about just feeling guilty for what they've done. It's about making amends and transforming behavior. Now, let's break it down a little further with some examples for you. Okay? I, I, I really want to kind of help you. So, let's take it up a notch because I know that this has been a little heavy. So, let's lighten it up a little bit. Imagine you're in a sitcom. In episode one, the husband comes to you and confesses to forgetting his wedding anniversary. He is saying, honey, I'm sorry. I forgot that it was our anniversary. Now you as the wife, you're extremely upset. You know, he says, sorry. And then the episode ends. Well, that's confession. It keeps it lighthearted. It's just, oh, I did this. Let's move on. Okay? Sweep it under the rug. It's just turning a page of a day. Let's move on. But in episode two, he doesn't just say sorry. He actually plans a surprise anniversary do-over. Complete with your favorite flowers, he has handwritten a beautiful letter to you. And maybe he even you know, YouTubed how to cook your favorite meal. Now that is repentance. That's repentance. He's gone the extra mile. There is acknowledgement. There is accountability. There is responsibility. There's action. There's change. There's commitment. Now, to give it some real world context here, Well, let's refer to the work of Dr. John Gottman. Now, he's a renowned relationship expert. And his method of recovery from betrayal has an 87% success rate. That's why I use a lot of his material. They are amazing, he and his wife. So, according to Gottman, true repentance involves four key elements. Those are responsibility, regret, remedy, and renewal. Confession covers the responsibility part. That is to say, I did it. Yes, I did it. But repentance dives into the remaining three, regret, remedy, and renewal. You see, regret shows that the betrayer truly understands the pain that they've caused to you. Your husband realizes the devastation in your life. He realizes the agony, the pain, the loss, the suffering. And then remedy is about making things right. Kind of like rebuilding trust brick by brick. They're going in and they're going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to see the CSAT. I'm going to join the group. I'm going to have an accountability partner. I'm going to support you in your journey of healing from trauma. We're going to do couples coaching together. Whatever it takes, we're going to do it brick by brick to rebuild what we have lost, which is trust inside of the relationship. And renewal, 
Well, beautiful, that's about making sure that betrayal doesn't happen again by committing to lasting change. In other words, teshuva, true transformation of the heart. That's where it's not behavior modification. It's actual heart transformation. So why is this distinction so crucial? Well, think of your marriage like a garden. Confession is admitting that you've been neglecting the garden. You've let the weeds take over, so to speak. But true repentance is getting down on your hands and knees. You're taking the time to pull out those weeds. You're actually cultivating the soil. You're planting new seeds. You're nourishing the soil. You're watering the seeds. You're tending to it. You're putting in the hard work, in other words, because without it, the garden will never bloom again. So let's kind of summarize all this for you. Let's bring this plane down for a landing, shall we? Confession and true repentance are two sides of the same coin, but they play very different roles in the healing process after betrayal and marriage. Confession is what opens the door, but true repentance walks through the door and starts fixing what is broken. If you've been betrayed, Look for signs of true repentance from your spouse. Not just confession, but true repentance. Remember, actions speak louder than words. And actions over the long haul that are true to form, they are actually producing fruit in keeping with true repentance. And if you're the betrayer that is listening to this podcast right now, remember that saying just, I'm sorry, is just the beginning. That's not enough. It's what you do next that truly matters. Because what you do next is going to determine whether your life is going to truly change and whether or not your relationship is actually going to be reconciled. So I hope today helped you. I hope and pray that you now understand the difference between confession and true repentance and what to look for, whether you're the betrayed spouse or whether you're the betrayer. And if you need help in reconciling your relationship, I have two, only two more slots available for July for couples coaching, and you can grab one of them by going below in the show notes and getting a free consult today to see if this will work for you. And by the way, we have our brand new coaching program for women opening up August 1st. It's Beyond the Betrayal group coaching program. All of the information below in the show notes, you can click on the link It'll take you over to all the information and you can register today. There's only 10 more slots available, ladies. This is a group coaching program and it is highly discounted. It's a three-month program where you can catapult your healing journey after betrayal. So grab one of the slots while you can because we jumpstart, open the doors, and we really hit the ground running August 1st. So get in now while you can secure your spot. Stay tuned for Friday's episode because we are going to look at some of the spiritual aspects of healing from betrayal. So stay tuned. Thanks for stopping by today and spending a little while with me. I hope you enjoyed today's show and found hope, healing, and encouragement. Please remember to subscribe to my podcast and leave a review. You can even screenshot this episode and share it on IG or Facebook stories. This is how we get the message of hope and healing out to all women who are in the midst of betrayal and loss. If you're ready to move out of the devastation of betrayal and take the next step in your healing, make sure to reach out to me and schedule your breakthrough coaching call today. Until next time, love God, live your life passionately, and always choose joy in the midst of any circumstance that you may face. Cheers to you, beautiful.